the Nationals frontbencher Barnaby Joyce, the former Deputy Prime Minister. Barnaby Joyce, thank you so much for joining me. The government doing next to nothing to stop the Houthis that are causing havoc with our shipping costs and inflation. Should it have done more? Now, oh, of course. We, we didn't even get a, a warship up into the Red Sea. Uh, I don't know whether it's because they didn't want to or they couldn't. But either of those that they either weren't able to or didn't want to is a really bad outcome for Australia because we are more reliant on that channel than so many others. Because you don't to go from Europe to the United States, you don't have to go through the Suez Canal, but you do if you want to go from Europe to Australia. And um, to go from Australia to our major markets in the Middle East, even if you don't go through the Suez Canal, you're still in the frame of being at threat of Houthi rebels. And this goes to show you that the Iranian-baked Houthi rebels are becoming more and more um, aggressive and more and more confident that their aggression will not have any real pushback. Well, of course, they can come to that view because they're getting be all pushback from us. That's exactly correct. And, of course, you know, we've got NATO, the NATO meeting in Washington you know, with Joe Biden stuttering around. Um, there we've just been warned that China's even helping Russia. Well, who's going to do anything about that now? Helping Russia in its uh, war in Ukraine. Seriously, the, the, I feel like the noose is getting around our neck and our government doesn't seem to be reacting like you'd expect, even when it says, oh, no, we know we're in more danger than normal, but I'm not seeing action. I think we're in a Rip Van Winkle land. You know, our job in our nation is to become as strong as possible, as quickly as possible. I've been saying that for years, years and years. And when I watch, I, when I watch Mr. Biden, Joe, you know, I, I, it's almost like seeing a child that's drunk. You get, you go, I don't want to see this anymore. I, it really worries me. This, this, this poor man, who's obviously really struggling, and you know, it's it's become, it's gone from a parody to pathos. And we, but Australia sits back and goes, you know, it's it's all right because we'll be fighting our war against the weather. And if something goes wrong, those mums and dads in Tennessee and South Dakota and California, they'll send across their sons and daughters to get their heads blown off on our behalf. Because when we should have been making ourselves prepared for the issues in our backyard with the Communist People's Republic of China and a totalitarian regime, instead of worrying about that, we were fighting the weather. It's so true. The billions and billions were spent and these ludicrous claims that our greatest security threat is climate change. I mean, what a joke. What a I, I always take people up on that. I take be. people up on that. If, if, when you say to them, OK, they say, well, you know, do you believe climate change is real? I say, yeah, yeah. But I just want you to tell me, how many of your, um, how much of your house have you lost to climate change thus far? How much of your super fund have you lost to climate change thus far? Have you lost any of your sons and daughters yet to climate change? Um, has your job been taken off you or your future been diminished uh, by ba basically being becoming a, a vassal precinct of climate change? And they go, well, no, no but it, it might happen. And I say, oh, fair enough. I can tell you right now, if you come sa second in a major military conflict with China, if you come second or even if it's a draw, you lose all of that. Your house, beautiful house, yep. that beautiful yep. house that you might have there, gone. Children's future, gone. All that money in your super fund, gone. The whole lot, the whole lot. So how about you focus on the main game? I, 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 I have to agree there, let alone the cost that uh, the climate change is really wreaking, you know, with power bills and, and the billions on wind farms and no, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's just terrible. It's um, insanity. Look, We're driving our economy uh, into the ground. Driving our, dri driving our economy yeah, into the dirt. Yep. Uh, Barnaby, um, yeah. I was, I'm sure you have talked about, I've seen uh, this evidence of a war that's closer to home. You probably saw former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. You were his deputy, um, abusing opposition leader Peter Dutton on Channel 10 this week. Here he is. Well, he's a thug. Peter's got one tune that he plays. I mean, it has been all his political life, and that is division and animosity. Now, Peter Dutton today responded to Turnbull's playground abuse with a bit more class, uh, like this.
I just think people can see through it and uh, I I wish him the best. I think he diminishes himself by uh, making these comments. Malcolm, you've got an axe to grind. I think it's sad. What would you say to Malcolm Turnbull? Well, it sounds like a very animated, divisive uh, interview that Mr Turnbull gave. Uh, uh, M Malcolm, you know, it's not so much in politics how you rode the horse, it's how you get off it. Now, some people get sweetly out of the saddle. They take their, they, they take their right foot out of the stirrup and they swing sweetly off the horse and walk to the rails to the, to the applaud and the adulation of the waiting crowd. And some people can't help themselves. They've got to keep that left foot stuck halfway in the stirrup as the horse run round the yard, go, drag them through the, the, through the horse manure. Now, get out of the saddle, mate. Walk to the rails and in, enjoy the post-political life. Get your foot out of the stirrup, Malcolm. It's just being dragged around like this, and that's all that's happening. You, you, you turn yourself into a parody, and it's... What has become of you? You're a smarter bloke than that, Malcolm. You know that. Think about it. Just, you, know, you have a big sleep, wake up in the morning and think, how do I want to be remembered? Well, it's not that person in the park, Malcolm. Don't be a madman in the park. Uh, that uh, analogy was very useful to remind viewers that you are from the National Party and I appreciate that. Um, just finally, Barnaby, reports from Canberra today that uh, Labor has told MPs to stop the childish mocking of the Coalition's plan for nuclear power. You know, with all that ridiculous posting of pictures of three-eyed animals and mutant pets like we're all going to be radiated and zapped. It says voters... Labor's now saying, well, voters think this is actually a serious topic. What do you make of it? It is a serious topic. I'll tell you why it's serious, because overwhelmingly all the countries with nuclear power, which is like, I think there's 20 co countries in the OECD, and we're the only one that doesn't have any connection to nuclear electricity, nuclear power. All the others have cheaper power than us. The more nuclear they seem to have, the cheaper the power seems to be. But it's all right, because Chris Bowen has said that they're all wrong, and he's right. See, he's a genius. And um, the rest of the world's wrong. It's just Chris Bowen and Anthony Albanese. But I'll tell you what's happening. I'm finding it very interesting that they thought that all these towns that if they were going to get a nuclear reactor would push back. Oh, well, they're pushing the other direction. They actually want them because they can see multiple billion dollar investments in their backyard. This just take away coal from boiling water to nuclear boiling water. The boilermaker jobs come back. The fitters jobs come back. The electricians jobs come back. They're on good money, $120,000, $130,000 a year, plus penalties, pushing them up to one hundred eighty. dollars Their alternative under Labor is tech screwing in solar panels. <laughs> that doesn't work too well, not if you want a well-paying job. And um, uh, now we've got the arguments that people are saying in some towns, why didn't we? Why weren't we selected as a site for a new nuclear power station? <laughs> Why did we miss out on the multiple uh, billion town? dollar potential investment I in our heard backyard? That. What town? Well, uh, what town? Rockhampton wants one. They want one at Stanwell. And uh, Bill, Bill wheeler has got one. Okay. Hooray for Bill wheeler And Rockhampton wants one. They don't get one. Musselbrook wants a nuclear power station. And this well, is the new reality the, uh, because they are living in Queensland. Go and tell David Christopher this, because well, he seems think... to think uh, it shouldn't be part of the, the plan. Oh, well, I mean, look, they, they, you're all going to land in the land, land called reality very soon. Barnaby Joyce, always good to talk to you. See you later. Thank you, Andrew.